This week, Drew and I discuss the new plan for big events and shows. As we start month 11 now, since C19, business has to move on. As best it can, for sure. Like we said in March here on Stogie Geeks, business will change and some things will not go back to normal after this pandemic. Well, there's going to be a new format for some trade shows uh, and some cigar experiences as now the formats move to online and virtual experiences for both us as consumers and retailers. Drew and I are going to break that all down. And also, just to let you know, the number of chicken wings consumed on Super Bowl Sunday is expected to hit a record $1.4 billion, according to the National Chicken Council. Put me down for at least 29. How many will Drew have? All that and more on episode 354 of Stogie Geeks, which starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 354. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. We are recorded right here live in G Unit Studios. Today is February 5th. 2021 i have my co-host this week who is the little dark haired kid from texas who is still around who's been very busy hanging out in texas driving his uh f-150 i think it's called that's what they all drive out there anyway we have drew what's going on man f-150 no sir i drive a chevy silverado that's, that's what right. it was i don't it's know a bow tie <laughs> baby it's the bow tie you, you know? know i you know it's I, funny I was, I, <laughs> I was once a Ford owner, though, so I had a Ford Roush truck at one point, but after that, it's been the bow tie, but go ahead. When I was talking to you, I think it was two mornings ago, it's all a blur, right? It was two mornings ago, and you were like, yeah, man, my, in my mind, it was F-150, I apologize. You said, oh, yeah, I drive a Chevy Chevy Silverado, and I'm like, of course you do, you're from Texas, right? It's either a Chevy (laughs) or Ford, right? Or, like, real Texans drive Chevys and, 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 you know. Transplant we all drive trucks. It all drive trucks. trucks. That was <laughs> yeah, just trucks, just trucks, trucks in general. Yep, so, trucks and yeah. boots. You know, that's right. I, I can't wait for the snow to melt a little bit because this time of year I can start wearing my boots. Uh, there you go. I'm excited about that. Uh, it's, just, it's the little things. But anyway, Drew, when we on that same conversation, you and I had the opportunity to catch up and kind of talk about. You know, of course, the industry, news, what's going on, and this and that. And, 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 and you brought up two very good points about virtual experiences. And my, yeah. my first 
thought was, oh yeah, you know, us consumers have been going through that and whatnot. And you were like, no, there's a show happening that's going to go on virtual experience. It's going to have its own platform. It's going to have its own seminars and business forums and all of that type stuff. And I said, well, you know, um, Number one, after we clarified that description, I was like, you know, I really think that that's something that's going to stay, right? Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're, we're going to take some time out there and uh, break it down a little bit and um, deliver what's going on uh, in the premium cigar industry world. I want to thank everyone for watching and listening and tuning in to Story Geeks. Got a couple of super cool emails, too. Uh, don't let me forget uh, when we start to wrap up to kind of review them. Um, yeah, I, I think um, it's 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 uh, great to hear the uh, feedback uh, from the Stogie Geeks listeners. My email is joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Email all, all of your complaints this week to drew at stogiegeeks.com. Yes, we're going to give uh, Nelson a little bit of a break, right? Yeah. Uh, from the uh, <laughs> the rhetoric of emails that we get. <laughs> they're, they're not bad, but, you know, it's funny. It's, it was nice for uh, Nelson to take that upon while I've been out uh, tending to business and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to jump back in there. Uh, also, we have a Gustavo, right? He's 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 actually producing this show. Yeah, Gustavo yep. was producing Story Geeks there, and, and, and Johnny's like yeah. the, the monitor, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cool. Johnny's the bus monitor who's in charge, and then Gustavo is now the bus driver, so. Yeah. <laughs> Little Padawan has I, come. He's the bus. He's the, Johnny said he's the bus. I, I'm, I just put the pickles on a hamburger, kid. Well, you know what congratulations I mean? to the... <laughs> Congratulations to the young to the young guy, and uh, you know, look yeah. forward to working many many episodes with him. So, and Johnny still around. Awesome. <laughs> so, Joe, so, take take me and our Stogie Geeks listeners through your journey of finding out number one about this conference, and number two about like the format of the conference, and uh, I'll chime in with some of the virtual experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, I was just catching up uh, during my downtime. There was a uh, you know in between my business trips and whatnot. Just you know, I would get these uh, <coughs> blips on my email. Excuse me, I got a little allergy issue. Um, so yeah, just looking over some of the uh, the conferences that are coming up, like TPE and uh, IPCPR, which is what now. Have they come up with a new name yet? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. I'm not going there. Every time I go okay. there, I, PCA I get or whatever. It I is. Get, <laughs> So so get, all, you, you always yeah. like to rattle the cage, right? <laughs> poke the bear, poke the bear. <laughs> yeah, but they, uh, PCA. You know, but every time I yeah, say PCA. that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have privileges to, to talk about that, according to some people. Right, right, right. So, but yeah, it's uh, it was nice. Uh, it was interesting to see how they're going to pivot uh, to these virtual online educational classes, uh, seminars, and things of whatnot in the industry uh you know i have uh, uh guest speakers uh and uh you know i went on to some of their uh some of their uh, sites and just kind of looked around and poked around and i saw you know like the guest speakers uh that were there and uh that were already uploaded and um like i was listening to carl malone a few days ago uh talking about you know his you know his his uh transition into the cigar uh, industry and how he's working with you know various people his family and uh, uh to make you know to have that come forth and it's kind of cool because it gives the uh consumer kind of an in insight of what goes on behind the scenes and how things of that uh of that nature come to fruition and uh just to get that information uh and just talk about that process was was uh very informative uh if you're looking to you know want to go that you know uh distance and, and to see how things are transitioning on the backside. Uh, the virtual <coughs> excuse me the uh virtual classes uh or the virtual seminars uh again you got a uh, a host of different companies that are able to sit in these virtual rooms and discuss their their products uh what's coming out who are they partnering partnering up with uh in the upcoming year we talk about different business ventures and it's just pretty like again it's very interesting very cool uh very 
uh, interactive with the audience. Only this time, it's on a broader spectrum. So now you really get the understanding of of how these things are coming again to transition and then rolled out. So uh, along with that, uh, the I, I know during my downtime, I, you know, I had to do some traveling and things of that nature. And, and there's a lot of companies, uh, including the company I work for in my day job, they're doing a lot of these virtual training and virtual educational tools. And they're just really getting uh, the, pers- the persons involved interactive there on the screen. So whether you're doing a Zoom or a meetup or uh, uh, one of the platforms that TPE is joined is uh, 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 Snapcard, I believe it is, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Swapcard. 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 Yep. There you go. Uh, so, you know, very, uh, you know, very informative. Uh, it, you know, I w- went on to Swapcard, checked out their portfolio and just kind of saw what they were doing in the business world. And you know, it's just, it's really neat. It's really, uh, it's going to be really, uh, it, it's going to impact uh, businesses out there all over the world um, who choose to go this route to 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 keep the consumer engaged with what's going on within their company uh, lines and whatnot. Yeah, I I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's super important, right? Like now that we are in, in month 11 of restricted travel uh, restrictions in regards to uh, how many people can be in a certain square foot area and all of that stuff. It is yeah. probably safe to say that conferences are maybe Q4 at best. And I would venture to say that there might be a little bit of that reluctance or hesitation factor for people to immediately jump on a plane and travel. And, you know, it, it, we, we said this in, in March when we were under our original lockdown from COVID-19, how, you know, this will be, I think the quote I used was, this will be like a 9-11 where 10 to 20 years from now, there have been practices that we've learned from COVID that are still going to be put in place. And I explained it to like the TSA, right? 9-11 happens. And yet, if we still travel, we still deal with the TSA when we're in the airport and and that's not going to go away. Right. And now, um, you know, attendance can really go up if conferences tend to, to, um, take it online. Now having experience with that in my day job working online and in cybersecurity here at G unit studios, you know, um, it's, We've had that experience, right? The last physical conference that we've all flown to was out in San Francisco, and it was in February. Uh, and then we had the lockdown, etc. And since then, we've had other major conferences that have taken place during 2020. And there are mm-hmm. some major conferences that, that are coming up that are scheduled for 2021, and they are going to be a virtual experience. And yeah. I, I do say it is different, right? It, it is really different. Um, some platforms are pretty interactive. Uh, some platforms are you're, you're kind of distant a little bit because there is that computer factor and you are sitting either in your home or whichever. But it also allows, you know, what about the company or the brick and mortar cigar shop that couldn't make it to a particular conference uh, mm-hmm. there uh, either because it was timing or they couldn't take the full week out or whichever. And now with with it going online, you can now do your duties at home and then take time out of your schedule and kind of be at two places at once, right? That's that that's yeah. one of the benefits of of going online is that you know you can do your home duties and do that there uh, and whatever that entails, and then you can also uh, participate into the different groups and then chat with people and obviously. With COVID, there has been a slew of consumer cigar groups that are joining uh, either via Zoom or, uh, you know, Facebook groups or whichever. And that has taken off uh, as well, which is kind of cool, I think, right? Because it brings more awareness to the subject matter that, you know, okay, a platform like Stogie Geeks has been online forever, right? 
Uh, yeah. and, and, and now that since there's more people online, I'm getting newer and newer listeners who take the time out to write me and say, Hey, you know, found the show. And the, the, one of the themes that they say is, wow, like, like story geeks is really different. Right. Uh, and these are the reasons why and stuff like that. But, but getting back to the conferences, it's like, you know, uh, consumers now have the opportunity and retailers now have the opportunity this is why I think it's a good thing, right? Because if yeah. a retailer, which we've talked about this multiple times on the show, if a retailer is reluctant to go online for his or her shop, now if they actually participate, th I think that's going to open up doors for them to see the real power of online too. So again, yeah. it's going to bring more awareness for them to say, hey, I went to a conference that I've been going to for 20 years. You know, I've been going to the 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 you know PCA and, and TPE and, and or TAA conference and and or, or any of the other conferences. And now, I accomplished my buying, my educational component online. Maybe it's time to take my business online. Now, not now. I'm talking about specifically that PCA audience having that. If yeah. you're part of the TAA, chances are that's a volume driven accreditation retailer process for you to be in that specific group. I would probably say most of them, like 99% of them already have an online set up anyway, but at least, at least they, the, they can go back uh, to other people who might be aspiring to be at their level from taking a brick and mortar to a regular brick and mortar to an exclusive level uh, within the industry. Yeah, I was talking to a, a couple of brick and mortars here uh, in the past uh, few days uh, talking about this, actually, this, this about how, you know, they can really capture and ride this wave. And then the wave itself will lead them to, you know, many other waves uh, such as, you know, lead generation and talk about, you know, opportunities, networking with others, uh, you know, in the, in, in the, in the cigar industry and, and make and forge a bunch of new relationships that they would not have the ability to the old way, which is someone coming by, knocking on your door, you know, doing the soliciting deal and just kind of going through that process. So having them understand that and how easy and simple it is now, there's so many different tools out there such as swap card and 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 zoom and and meet up and all these other uh uh skype you know was the, i think was one of the original ones uh but yeah to go through that process and start to really hone in and it doesn't take much i mean it really doesn't take much you get a camera get your stuff and then you get your uh, peripherals to go along with it go live and then or join one of these platforms where they can host it for you and take advantage of that. I mean, geez, you know, it's, uh, um, and I think a lot of them are starting to understand that, you know, that's a good way to, to do this at a very low cost. Uh, I know the larger companies, they're taking a lot of the revenue that they're not spending now on these conferences and renting out big, huge convention centers, like in Las Vegas or, uh, Chicago or whatnot. Now you just take all that revenue and now you just, focus it into these you know platforms and then from there you just basically created not basically you have created a whole new business mm -hmm. uh you know uh trajectory for themselves and so yeah, yeah uh definitely definitely something that they need to really uh you know I, and if they're asking questions like they are like the ones i was just talking to the last couple of days that's a good thing that means they're they're finally understanding how viable that this uh uh you know, having the virtual and 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 uh, and and being able to talk to the customers and the consumers uh, in their area, you know, directly, it's 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 wonderful. Yeah, and it, it's it's, it's going to be and and you know, it's just a sign of the times, right? It's 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 yeah. a new and exciting uh, venture for you know the uh, you know previous shows uh, have been conference shows weren't big enough to be in conferences and they would be done in hotel rooms at 
yeah. specific, you know, or the show floor grows, uh, you know, gets to a show floor and, and, and format and all of that stuff. And, and yeah, I mean, there is something to be said about going out and having a steak dinner with your friend or Conrad in the industry. Sure. Who, who, you know, sharing a steak dinner or sushi or whatever, pick your poison out there in Vegas, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> you know yeah. that's not going to go away, but um, you know, it's just it's just not going to be anytime soon. It just it's just the reality of that. And right. um, who knows? M- maybe you know there is no hard and fast rule when it comes to business and having businesses pivot. Where you know. Um, Maybe in the future, two, three years from now, you know, when things are hopefully back to normal, right? Uh, yeah. w- w- they can do both, right? They have, maybe they have the virtual experience a week after the regular experience for the people who couldn't attend and whatnot. And because I've spoken to many retailers who often say about any show, you know, that's a stupid time to have a show. It's right around 4th of July, and we're in the Northeast, and or it's, yeah. you know, travel is this, and they, you know, who wants to go to Vegas in, 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 in summer, and blah, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. Well, now, you know, hey, you, you, now maybe you go every other year, and then you take the online option there, and then, you know, three years from now, and you can accomplish both, and, and, and things will be, you know... Um, uh, it'll it'll open up the actual audience for sure yeah. you know i think yeah go ahead no i was gonna say yeah and that's what tpe ignite for their for their deal that they're they you know and 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 their in their uh discussion of this you know you know tp ignite something that will stick around for tw- uh past 2021 yeah or will it change for 2022 and like and like you just said i mean i i mean there's nothing like showing your wares, you know, or having these conferences in person. It's fun. Uh, you get interactive face to face. I mean, uh, I, I miss some of my buddies. I have to talk to them online quite a bit because they're in the West Coast, mm-hmm. and so you know, I'm not going to fly out there and go play golf, you know, and or enjoy, you know, the guys get together or whatnot. Because right now that state is just full of <laughs> oh, COVID yeah. issues. Yeah, but but you know, yeah, there's nothing like being. You know, in the same, you know, in the same area, you know, live, you know, that'll never, I mean, that, that, that experience will never change, but, but yeah, uh, I, I think it will, I think it will, I think it will transition back, but I think at this time, a, a lot of these, uh, uh, experiences that were, that they're now developing, they're going to be able to do more than one or two things a year. Now they'll be able to do, you know, do things all year round if they like, mm-hmm. And and and, um, and and figure out you know what what what's going to really work and generate and grow, and then understand that when they do uh, do a you know live event you know at, at the convention center or whatnot, <clears throat> they'll be able to uh, better gauge that process. Yeah. Um. You know. So. Yeah. I think it'll forever change. Uh. For sure. You know. Yeah. I think the retailers will uh see again see the power of online and. Uh, get something different out of it, right? Some of them right. will like the old school experience because let's face it, it is an old school product. It is an old school sales process. But I have had countless because of Stogie Geek's relationship with the Havana Cigar Club next door. I've I meet sales reps on a you know a, a daily basis almost, right? Uh, yeah. You know, and and I, I tell them like you know if I was a if I were you in a pre-covid era and you know because they always say you know i gotta because here in the northeast they go all the way up to like syracuse right and Uh that's that's eight hours from here i think it's eight hours or ten hours it's a long drive two-lane highway you're going diagonal uh if you have out of state you know you're gonna cut through new well it's in new york but once you once you pass new hampshire to get into new york you better slow down with with rhode island plates uh for sure (laughs) right and 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 you know and 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 it's uh, they're like, oh, I gotta go all the way up there to come all the way back, and and this and that, and I'm like, well, why don't you do like a a, a every other week Zoom call with that person, and then yeah. go down like once a month or whatever the cadence and rhythm is, per their buying cycle, and you come up with something, and ninety percent of them have told me, oh, corporate would never allow it, 
And I'm like, okay, well, why don't you get together with your other sales force? And when you report to a sales manager, say, hey, uh, we should try this. Um, yeah. We should try the Zoom thing because not it's not a cash and go. I mean, you know, I can tell you that since I've been here at Security Weekly, it's all Zoom. There's no way we're meeting someone. You know what I mean? The conferences, you know, for you to to get on the set and do that, you the meetings and everything has to be done, you know, the show prep or content prep and all of that. That's that's all done via Zoom. And mm-hmm. and and you know, I understand it's cybersecurity versus pre- premium cigar, but like I would be checking in, and it's amazing how they're like, yeah, no, I I I I I have to go, and I'm like, I understand you have to go, but now you're gonna drive eight or ten hours in each direction with no guarantee of sale i don't think any proper company would would want you uh, you know you don't get paid to drive you get paid to sell cigars you know yeah <laughs> and i know you get paid to be in the brick and mortar and all of that stuff and there's something to do with facetime and all of that stuff now that when COVID is hit i mean some reps uh, some companies are not sending reps on the road at all so yeah. next door have had some limitation events. They've done some creative, uh, restrictive events around COVID. For yeah. example, uh, instead of having seventy guys or gals or patrons for one event one day, they spread it out over three days and then give the deal to people who don't even attend the event. You know what I mean? Because they couldn't right. make it or they don't want to get out because of COVID, but they want to enjoy the specific cigars in there. And, yeah, it's a pain because you got to cook three times. But yeah. I can tell you that the workers like it because, number one, they can pay more attention to the 20 people a night as opposed to yes. the 80 people, right, or 70 people. Number two, uh, they're on, like, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? So it eliminates the weekend crowd. Uh, there and 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 the buzz about the product lasts all week long, right. you know. And I don't think that that's going to change. Like like that, I would venture to say that the deal, whatever the the actual deal is, uh, for the dinner or for the event, it, it would make sense for a brick and mortar to ride that out all week long and and make yeah. that event. You know, fill in the blank, Lotto or uh, uh, Week or, you know, uh, Southern Draw or freaking Noel Rojas or whoever, whoever's doing the event, Drew Estate, et cetera, you know. And um, though that type of activity, I think, is 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 really going to stay uh, for sure. Yeah. And, 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 and by all, I mean, the people I've spoken to, uh, the consumers I've spoken to, they feel the same way. Like, this is pretty this this is. It's convenient now for them to go uh, to the virtual uh, happenings. You know, Steve Saka had one last week. Um, I was trying to look it up real quick, and uh, and it was and, you know a lot of my friends that that smoke uh, the brand, um, they 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 had they had an enjoyable time with the with the meatball deal that they had. Sure. Yep. Yep. And 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 they were actually be they were actually be you know they they were on it for the hour and a half it was, and they were able to enjoy that uh, process. Matter of fact, two of the uh, the two cigar lounges that I was talking about earlier, um, uh, they they actually had that on their screens, and it was pretty cool. I mean, and, and uh, it, it brought like new ideas to some of the members of the of the. Uh, um, of the cigar lounge. Hey, let's do this on our own. Let's do this and that. Or, you know, it, it generated things and it, uh, interest and in new things in the lounge. And that was pretty cool. So, uh, you know, to see that and, and, and have that camaraderie grow, uh, with, with everybody giving more ideas and, 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 and then having these be virtual for, uh, anybody to, to enjoy in their area, uh, it, it it brings again, I think, more opportunity to their brick and mortar. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You know, as far as sales and and uh, you know, uh, growing their their customer base. Mm-hmm. So, other than the uh, TPE show making the change with going uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. going with uh, SwapCod, SwapCod, uh, just for you, Stoigi listeners, uh, um, it's it's a platform that allows you to run. Uh, different events, right? You can run a uh, corporate event 
or you can run a exhibition event, you know, kind of like show and tell demonstration, uh, have mm -hmm. live um, audience interaction, etc. Or you can, um, you know, deliver a conference experience for attendees and talk about the knowledge there and whatnot. And there are a ton of other platforms. The reason why we're focused on uh, uh, swap card f f for the purpose of discussion is because that that's the actual platform that the TP is actually using, right? Yeah, um, yeah. There, there are nine? a ton more, and and you know probably I don't know twenty, no, nah, nah, probably not twenty. Fifteen episodes back, I spoke about having the opportunity to have like a Story Geek Slack or Discord um, yeah. that is still on the table. Uh, for you listeners who've actually taken the time to email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com to tell me if you're interested. I put you all in a separate folder so when we pivot and do that there. But then it got me thinking, like, wow, like, you know, um, we just did a uh, cigar blending um, uh, experience with John from Alec Bradley. We did it here in studio. And, yeah. you know, we were talking about doing another one for other vendors and stuff like that because that's the stuff that the, especially like the Stogie Geeks listeners or especially mm -hmm. us at as as Stogie Geeks that we really enjoy, right? So I want to kind of pivot the conversation to kind of talk about some of the other virtual experiences that you found over the past, I don't know, nine, 11 months or so th that are out there. Um, and so maybe the study geeks can kind of, you know, learn about them and, and jump on. I have a few. So, um, if you want to go first, go for it. Yeah. You know, again, you know, I, there's so many of them out there, you know, there's, I get, we get so many invitations, you know, I, you and I do, I, I know that for a fact, uh, we get so many, uh, great interests in sharing their, their virtual events. And so, uh, you know, of course, you know, you get them on, you get the platforms like, like Facebook Live and, and they hold their virtual herfs and whatnot. I think you've attended a couple. I have, I have attended a few uh, as well, just to kind of get that interactive in experience with people and, 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 and talk, uh, you know, tobacco and whatnot. So uh, that, uh, I'm trying to think this so many I'm, I'm gonna let you go ahead and go one I'm yeah gonna, sure yeah, yeah sure here, uh oliva, oliva um yes. has a uh qr code on their boxes and allows them to um when you scan the qr code uh for you story geeks that might not be up on technology uh you on a smartphone qr code you scan it goes to a website there uh and then you can um you know go to the tobacco farm and then yeah. uh you know experience that there uh you know uh i know that uh placentia uh jc newman uh as well on their website has um the the off their website they're a little bit heavier on the social media platform which i thought was pretty cool uh around halloween time uh jc newman did uh stories about the factory right so let's, uh, let's kind of put that in perspective, right? Yeah. It's an old yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they were celebrating 125 years this year. Well, 2020, 125 years. And workers who've been there, and some of their workers are like second generational workers, right? So, you know, you kind of hear stories, you know? And I'm not trying yeah. to turn it into a ghost stories, and I don't want to talk about ghost stories and chicken wings. Hey, that could be a, a topic title right <laughs> ghost stories and chicken wings right but 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 you know um you know it, it's like it, it the if i want to encourage the the story geek the story geek listeners go to jc newman get on their social media they they got some super cool kind of tidbits that 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 they do but again yeah it's gonna give you a tour of the factory uh if you subscribe to the newsletter you get to um uh, experience now you experienced this more back in 2020 so who knows what they're gonna come up with with with, with 2021 but you saw a progression of them doing the factory renovations and stuff like that there's been numerous posts uh, yeah. on all all of the platforms they're on Instagram Facebook Twitter uh, yeah. they have a YouTube channel which I think is super cool as well yeah. if you go to the YouTube channel 
uh, they interview like some some employees and stuff like that, and you get to know them because like think about it, these are the employees that go there every day, uh, yeah. there too. Uh, getting back to my original point, the Oliva, right? Uh, Oliva cigars. Um, you know, you get to visit the farm and all of that stuff. I, yeah. You know, um, I follow as much as I I get into Stogies and the premium tobacco. I follow craft beer and um, and wine uh, more than th- than I do personally the actual spirits like the craft mm-hmm. ultra craft spirits. It's not that I'm an ultra craft spirit guy. It's just it's just bandwidth, right? But like the vineyards yeah. have gotten into that too, right? Where you can visit the vineyards and all of that. Um, exactly. You know, and and I I always take time out to. To kind of check that out at night or or during my free time to to kind of experience that and it's not a covid thing i've always been fascinated about that that stuff you know yeah um which is probably just it's yeah i was gonna say it It was it's just now amplified now because of the you know the times we're in but like you know i'm glad you brought up believe it because i remember uh reading uh cory uh uh bad part who's the ceo of oliva cigars uh you know one of the things i thought it was pretty pretty very cool was that on that quick read code uh the qr code uh you know they they uh they pinpoint the factory where that you know where the cigar was rolled and what tobacco was used for it and so like those things are are awesome you know um and I understand a lot of companies are following those footsteps uh, to 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 have that same experience uh, for their tobacco products. Mm, yeah, and 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 one of the original ones that I was exposed to when I first became a host here in 2017 of Story Geeks was the Tobacconist University. Mm-hmm. Right. So for you story geeks out there, throw Tobacconist University into your Google profile, and there are tons of stories now they're a little bit older school with that it's a lot of pdf reading right but if you actually have a, the opportunity to go through the their basic curriculum right you get history of the leaf primings uh you know storage and all of that so then when you start to pay attention to that and go through that experience there's a book that comes with it too it's available on amazon or through their website and whatnot i've had the book um you know, I've 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 read the book and gone gone through the curriculum and it's like, you know, it's super cool because it doesn't change, right? Um another uh you know, another experience depends. It depends on how you receive information, right? Some people like right. the visual graphics effects from that. Uh some like to read. Me, it's a combination of both. I mean, you know, if it's a visual graphic uh, informational, super cool dialogue. I'm probably gonna read that faster than than going through a PDF, you know, a hundred page PDF. Yeah. Or 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 a book, right? Uh, it's just it's just a component of the time. It's not preference, right? Yeah. But again, like the Tobacconist University, you, you'll begin to experience that, and then when you go through that curriculum, and you watch an episode, a podcast of Story Geeks or another podcast. You're like, holy crap, like like that stuff all comes together, right? Yeah. And 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 there are some people, you know, uh another thing that we both mentioned off air and we'll mention it on air now is the uh uh no uh Noel Rojas kit, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh and he has like a level one, two, three. I'm in the yeah. middle of that. I don't know if you got your hands on one of them. Did you get your hands on I one of them? Not. Yeah, no, I, I, I not. I'm no. a prof- I, I get I get I get to hang out with Noel, so <laughs> I get the live version of this. Right, experience. right. Well, for those <laughs> for those in the Northeast, right? Um, you know, uh, Nelson um, went on a hunt for this thing, uh, yeah. and 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 Nelson found two kits. Uh, yeah. As of last week, he he had not started it. That that's his that's his uh, his update for me he's like if you started that kit yeah i'm like yup <laughs> yep, yep. right i mean you know i'm not gonna have a a, a box of of a, of some tutelage from 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 noel and and not start to go through it and it's funny because it, it comes together and it's an experience right you open up the box it's got the map right it's got the map of the region and then it's got uh a p a piece of uh it's wax paper and it tells you like to prime the seed the region and the idea of it 
is to smoke all around the region and rappers and 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 and, and blends and uh like yeah. a like a creo 98 or this is the hero from Esteli, or this is uh you know it's uh it's, it's a creo 98 from 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 Condega, right so so you get all these different regions and the idea is you yeah. smoke around and you write your notes and it comes with a, like a little note card right that you can write your notes and and i'll go through this in another episode for sure uh once nelson goes through his kit there i'm sure we're going to invite noel back uh yeah. you know and and and, and kind of review that but then it has the cigars in the center right so in the yeah. center of the cigar then you choose you get to pick and choose which, which region uh there now you know uh you can ping Noel Rojas and guess and tell him. And the funny thing is, the people who have been posting on that, like he's very active on social media. Oh yeah, you yeah, know he likes to, yeah, he likes to really, really get that that consumer experience really in their hands. And doing this by this uh, <clears throat> kit that he has put out, uh, you know, his love and passion to really have the consumer really understand what he's doing. Uh, you know, I remember what. Uh, being able to get a three pack from him where I did a Condega, uh, Jalapa in Peru, uh, you know, uh, variances, uh, of the tobaccos and, and just, you know, him, you know, having me, um, you know, go through that experience, taste it. And then, and then, you know, educate me as to why, you know, why this is, you know, why this is important to understand. And, and from there, uh, you graduate, you know, to the other uh, regions. And so it's pretty cool. I mean, it's very, very, and again, it's very neat um, process. It, it makes, it lets you understand what, what they go through uh, out in the uh, plant, uh, out in the factories and out in the, uh, out in the fields, you know, when they're, when they're growing, you know, uh, their tobaccos, uh, you know, for, uh, consume, you know, to be consumed, what, in three to five years from, from that, from that point mm -hmm. so yeah going through the aging process and understanding what that aging process does it's it's uh it's it's very uh yeah very informational educational and you you just get a really great understanding and, and appreciation for what everybody involved does right uh, I, and whatnot right <laughs> what what i like about it is it it it's there are certain things i don't know like you know when when uh, when we go through our own cigar journey and everything right there's certain mm -hmm. events that stick out in my mind right um yeah you know uh in the glory days when you know you can go to a, a event called light the legacy with manuel mm -hmm. and noah and you get to smoke all the different preferitos and it talks about the the, the La Aurora, uh uh preferito line Right, mm -hmm. and and then you go back and you t and, and it's like it's a kit and but what's super cool about that stuff is like it's a journey, right? And yeah. and we're all going through our own consumer journey, right? Uh, COVID has um, certainly allowed <laughs> the world to slow down, right? And yeah. what better way and process is that? But what I like about the Noel Rojas kit there. Is that not not only can you ping him on social media and get some 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 immediate you know immediate response for sure, but yeah. you can go through your own journey and come up with your own conclusions. But he also teaches you the process to slow down, which yes. I'm guilty of. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I you know I I come in to work and I have a cigar by habit. And I'm like halfway through the cigar, and like I'm, I don't even remember like what the hell I'm smoking. I'm like, whoa, Joe, you need to back up, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is me yeah, talking about stuff. Like, like you know what <laughs> I mean? Like you need to, you need to, like you know, you yeah, you forget. Like you know, now obviously we have the opportunity to smoke at work. It's cool, right? But yeah. you know, it's like you know, you, the, like this is what you got to do, and it, it it teaches me to do that. And now that I'm going through this Noah Rojas kit, right? Um. Um, now my palate, I was just talking to Paul about an hour right before the show. Like, I'm not seeking, you know, misfits by Black Label, <laughs> right? Super Pepper, right. Nicaragua, High Strong, um, you know, or or, or a Tatuaje uh, Petit Black Lancero in the morning. I want something tastier in depth 
and to show that transitional smoke. Now, a lot of that happened because what triggered in my mind over the the, the past 60 days, right? Uh-huh. Well, and uh, let, let's go back to past 30 days. Past 30 days, had the opportunity to sit down with, with John from Alec Bradley, smoke the wrapper and binder and the fillers mm-hmm. together, slow down the cadence, focus on the taste, focus on transition. If you missed that episode, you can go back a couple episodes back, Story Geeks, right? Uh-huh. And, 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 and do that there. Then I get this Rojas kit. Again, you got to smoke around the region, take notes, slow down. It could be a pain, right? And there are some days I'm like, I ain't taking notes. Like, I'm, 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 I'm just not going to do it today, right? So you got to be in the right mind frame for that, for yeah. sure, because it is time consuming. Now, if you're looking at the stick, okay, yeah, sure, it's an hour, right? I V-cut it with my little fancy knife, Drew. Thank you very much. Right. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Change, change my. Well, I'm now, I'm now like, like, like a samurai with this thing. I can do V cuts. I do V cuts. You know, because nice. I've always liked the V, but I have my own yeah. version of the deep V. Like I'm experimenting with different things. Right. But again, yeah. now my cadence is slowing down. Right. This is one of the elements that happened over the past sixty days of my life. Right. For you story yeah. geeks who are just listening and not watching, uh, Drew had sent us. Um, a super fancy knife cutter, one of the original cigar cutters uh, oh, there, so. and it has a blade, and, and again, something I'll treasure forever. But again, that happened 60 days ago, right? Then I get the the, the, the John Triano, uh, he's coming down the pike, so I stop, like, slowing down. I stop yeah. burning through, no, no, no pun intended, I stop burning through Alec Bradley repertoire because I'm supposed to guess the cigar. I didn't guess the cigar, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, uh, I, you can't really guess the region. You kind of know where it's from, right? But uh, you know, all those elements have focused, and so now my natural transition from my experience over the the cloud that I'm in right now, right, is that I want smokes that transition. So of course I'm going next door, and I'll go to another cigar shop today after work, and you know, I, I'm gonna go there. I'm like, yeah, man, I want something that like transitions and yeah some of them get it oh yeah 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 or some of them like you know like i've smoked and 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 i've been going down a rabbit hole with the cigar manager with the human oil manager next door of different sticks like you smoking i'm smoking and and then we'll report back in you know three hours or so and you know you can do that when when you're in the same building but that but that's what my cadence has been slowing down even now stick i'm smoking right now is the illusione uh eccj like pff, this is one of those sticks like i would like like it, it, if it were pre 60 days ago i'd be like yeah no you know what i mean yeah. but again it's 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 slowing it down and in my palate is uh increasing some of those uh transitional tasty sticks as opposed yeah. to super freakish strength I love super streak for super freakish strength in the morning. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> it's it's just super cool. But that's what yeah. that that's my journey over the past couple of months. Yeah, all those all those things co- uh, co- co- uh, come together when you do start to slow down. And uh, you know, like yourself, you know, I, I've gotten to you know quality uh, versus quantity. And I'm not saying that I should just sit here and just smoke whatever cigars I have, you know, sure. in, in, in session. But uh, you do start, you do stop, and you start, you know, when you go through that process uh, uh, of of going through uh, uh, like the kits and 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 burritos and whatnot, you really start to really appreciate the the nuances that those tobacco leaves are really giving you, and you start to really understand. Uh, in your mind, you know that that those those taste uh, uh, layers, I guess is the best way I could put it. Um, I know when I started doing that, probably about six six to eight months ago, I started to really slow down. I slowed down so much that my cigar like uh, inventory, my personal cigar inventory, has exploded. I had to take over another one of our closets because I have so many cigars now, and. Uh, because I'm slowed down smoking on them just because, as you just said, I really want to, you know, put in that quality time and emphasis and what I'm smoking, why, you know, what it, you know, where it's from, just kind of do the, take the notes and really dive into that wormhole and just, you know, really figure, you know, just, just go through it. I mean, it's, 
the one thing why we we smoke cigars is because it's a time for us. Uh, and I remember going years, uh, probably years ago, I, I used to say, yeah, it's an hour to myself. Now it's a quality uh, hour and a half mm-hmm. to myself. Uh, you know, you have good quality, you know, lighters. You have uh, uh, good quality cutters. You know, you start to really understand why these things all come together mm-hmm. and, and, and and really put forth that experience for any consumer. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I implore anybody just, you know, I mean, uh, I know when I go to cigar lounges, I mean, I see guys that are just like, you know, <laughs> just well, going at it. Again, and I, and I, you know, they, they, they got to do what they got to do, too. Yeah. You know? No, no. And I'm not saying, you know, what I'm saying is it's just, it's just that. You know, some of them can really, you know, uh, you know, slow down just a little bit because I, I, I hear guys that, you know, they, they, the cigars are too hot or it's not burning the way they wanted to or they're, you know, there's a lot of things to it. And as as like I tell them about their smartphones and computers, it's all pretty much user error <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in a friendly way. But, and then banter starts and then we go from there. <laughs> and then it's experience and stuff like yeah. that. Like, I, I don't know, like like my next mission. Right. Yeah, is like I'm kind of done with the torch, right? Yeah, I, I'm 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 in the market for a a, a, a good soft flame. I know so you, you get a pick. I get it. You know, so what you I mean? don't use cedar. You don't use cedar. Uh, the cedar. Uh, no. lee, uh, the cedar uh, stuff that that you find in some of the cigar boxes. Do you know why I don't use cedar? Because I'm all done right. burning track jackets. <laughs> 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 if you want to know, if you want to know, uh, I'm all done burning track. Every, I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, this lighter is starting to kind of, it's starting to get two cots, right? It's just, it's, yeah. it's been a couple years. I'm not one who loses lighters. I put it in the freaking same spot in my backpack that I carry around and all of that stuff. I have your cutter like, and the same thing. But like, I like uh, Bradley. Yep. I'm sorry. Uh, I like Bradley has some nice, uh, Art, artsy looking uh, soft burners. I don't know if you've seen those. No, I haven't. I'll have to talk to John about those. John gave me a super cool uh, uh, cut. The Alec Bradley cutter. They only made two fifty of them. Yeah, it's like it's like that hot rod red and chrome. Yeah. I'm like, I dude. I was actually I said it on a Story Geeks interview. Uh, I says uh, when when John was saying, I want to thank Alec Bradley for making the official Joe Zampa cutter because it's like a '50s retro, uh, yeah. flaming red, um, freaking chrome lighter. Uh, I'm, cool. I mean, cutter. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just want to thank the designers of Alec Bradley for making the Joe Zampa official cutter and stuff like that. And you know, I, I bounce back and forth between uh, the one John gave me and the one that that you have given me. The one John given me is on my desk. When you have given yeah. me goes with me uh, everywhere. You know, it's one of those things. Like, uh, like I, I treasure it, right? I remember when right. we've had. I think his name is Wes, off the top of my head. It was a gentleman from Calibri who came and he gave Paul and myself oh, yeah. uh, the Deep V. Again, I have the Deep V on my desk. You know, it's one of those things that I'll treasure. Um, yeah. There, but I've been so I've been getting into this artisan cutter thing, right? Uh, yeah. There. And then that, now I'm in the market for like a soft flame. So, Ju, yeah. send me a link on that. Uh, yeah, I'll send you Because when I say I'm in the market, I usually just put it out there. And then I get a bunch of emails from like Story Geeks listeners. <laughs> hey, try this soft flame. Try this. Try this. Try that. And and then I just go shopping from there. And then in the, it's, it's it's problem solved. And, and then to me, it becomes very special because like it was a process that I go through. As opposed to just jumping online and getting it right now. Like, you know, I know I can get it. You know what I mean? Right. I just like to go through that kind of thought process. Uh, yeah, that's cool. There too, um, yeah. So anyway, back to but before we transition out of this, um, yeah. I think the virtual elements are here to stay. There mm-hmm. are some super cool ones. I know there's like a Zoom Cigar Club. Uh, if you need the URL, email me at Joe H at Stogie, uh, geeks dot com. I got it uh, in a in a text chain from from Nelson somewhere. Uh, I can uh, you know you can join like a uh, there's like a, a a virtual Zoom room where you can mm-hmm. meet like random people and whatnot. I've popped in there from from time to time. Um, yeah. it's it's I think it's super cool. Um, you know, uh, there, there's tons of Facebook groups out there. Uh, yeah. If you know of any and want to share it with with Drew Nelson or myself, you you have our emails or just email 
um, Drew at StogieGeeks.com, and he'll yeah, CC and me and all of that stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll start. I'll start posting some of the ones that I go to, mm. uh, the ones I poke into uh, every now and then. Uh, so what I'll start doing, I'll start sharing them with our Stogies listener on my uh, um, Facebook. Yeah, uh, platform and and YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, Instagram. Yeah, and when you do that, <laughs> just shoot me a ping, uh, yeah. text so that I'll share it from you as Stoy Geeks and and it'll go so that if you follow Stoy Geeks or Drew, you can you can get that for you Stoy Geeks listeners. Great idea, great idea. Yeah, Drew. yeah, great yeah. That'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take the we'll take the work out of hunting for them by giving them them the ones. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, and and it's not like we 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 you know specifically picked out these is that they, they all have their uniqueness and so they're all pretty they're all pretty neat to check out mm-hmm. yeah and, yeah and tune in so yeah yep i got a couple of emails speaking of which yeah was it talk, glenn yeah. So, yeah uh glenn h emailed uh me uh about a week ago and i respond i responded a couple days ago um, uh-huh. You know, but, um, you know, he, he said, you know, I was listening to an episode at one point and he, you talked about Sagaz of the Month clubs. You mentioned mm-hmm. uh, the buyer needs to find unique offers rather than just random common sticks. He joined three. He mentions them. Do you have any others that that you recommend? So I flashed him an email back. I CC'd Nelson. I gave him two uh, c- c- cigar clubs that I recommend. And of course, Nelson comes back with like six more because <laughs> that's his thing. He's the official <laughs> stick chaser, right? Uh, you know, so you know, uh, you know, he did that and whatnot. So, um, you know, Glenn, thanks for flashing us an email. It's super cool uh, to 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 hear your story uh, and for listening. Uh, he he's a transplant from Texas. Actually, mm-hmm. he left Texas, Drew. So. Uh, he, he next time he's home he plans to meet the little dockhead kid from texas yeah yeah yeah. i think he's uh yeah i think he's overseas or something yep. or doing, yep. yeah yeah so that was part of that email there uh yeah. and hey, then Joe, yes just to let you know I, i've already sent you that uh soft oh the soft burn. flame but yeah don't don't distract me I'm not- <laughs> dude I, I just i'm just telling you right now it's coming to you you know me oh wait oh you're mailing it Oh, I, I've already, I've already, I just Dude, you always it. freaking show me up on this show <laughs> Yeah, what are you, guilty for not showing up for a couple of shows? <laughs> Valentine's Day, I'm giving you a Valentine's oh, Day present Oh, you don't have to do that, dude Well, then, alright Next week on Story <laughs> Geeks, Joe's gonna give you his shopping list So Drew can go shopping for Joe <laughs> Alright, uh, no, um, you know, I, th- thank you I thank you Um, I, I will treasure it forever Uh, just to let you know, uh, I want to go over one email because I, I, it's it's like it's like wow, like this is one of those emails that I kept. I have a process, right? I have a to do folder. Like, okay, email that's gonna get done. That's gonna get done. That's gonna get done. That's gonna get done. And then email I keep in 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 my inbox. I try to have like an empty inbox, which is almost impossible here at Security Weekly and Story Geeks. But um, you know, I try to have it because on my mobile. It just takes a while of there, and I keep it in my anyway, right? And I I kept reading this email over and over again, and um, I still didn't respond to it, right? It's just so it's just so like like wow, like this is crazy, right? Because it kind of encapsulates for 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 us us here on the show. It's like why we're here, right? Yeah, and also um. You know, like some of the topics that we talk about, and you know, you 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 know, having been in television and radio, you often forget, you know, um, you know, like you, you you do the show, and you know you do the show, but like I don't like go around saying, "Hey, I'm Joe Zappa, host story." <laughs> like you know what I mean? Right. Uh, I like to go to like the cigar shop I'm going to today uh, after work. Like it's like I can go and hide. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, um, a tard, and don't let us forget about uh, talking about at least the. Uh, are we allowed to say Super Bowl? Is that? <laughs> yeah, we can say that. <laughs> I don't know how that goes. The big game. I love the. I love the the the, the cigar shop emails. The come for the big game on Sunday. It's like, dude, just come for Sunday. Watch the football. It'll be great. All right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Um. You know, steak and cheese helping the cigar industry since 1998. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Todd F. 
had emailed me. He goes, hey, Joe, Todd here. I've been listening for a few years and really appreciate your insight on the cigar industry and, of course, your reviews. A couple of things that stood out from last year, right? So I'm like, okay, here we go. Deep breath, right? First, thanks for standing up to McAuliffe Cigars. Explanation point, right? Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> trying to paraphrase, right? Uh, thanks yeah. for standing up to McAuliffe Cigars. I've had a hard time understanding how some people in the industry can ask the same questions you do and they get a pass. Mm. It drives me crazy. However, I just want to let you know that I really agree with some of the things that you say, especially when it comes to the sales and business aspect of the industry, it really brings a really good point. Second, I feel I owe you a personal thank you, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, I love this guy, right? I'm like, I'm like, dude, this guy freaking, you know, it's okay. I at least got Drew and Nelson and Todd on my side, right? So, <laughs> so in in a post COVID world, we can go travel up to the headquarters over at McAuliffe and bang right, on the right. door. That will happen. That will happen. Yeah. I promise you uh, that will happen. Um, reminds me of the day in when I first started Xerox and I got hung up on by yeah. my first cut by my first prospect. And I put <laughs> my little I put my little suit on my sport jacket on and my my London fog as I was dressed to the nines. And right. I drove to the clients and I banged on their door. And I asked for the person who hung up on me. And he was like, what are you doing here? I was like, I, I just, I know that there must have been a phone problem. And my yeah. boss, he called, he called, Xer, he called Xerox and was like, dude, this kid's like crazy. Like, is this kid, you know, and I was like, no, no, I, 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 like, I was like, what the heck? Like, I, I expected you would want to talk from Joe Zampa, right? Uh, anyway, um, so getting back to my point. Second, I feel I owe you a big thank you for the review you gave to Quorum. The Quorum yeah. Sun Grown yeah. was one of the sticks that moved me. It's amazing how they are priced. <laughs> Based yeah. upon my budget factor, I've had some diamonds in the rough, but this is clearly one that I would give to my friends. So, so, so Todd buys the, these Quorums based upon our review, and I remember the Story Geek episode where it said this is a good stick, right? It doesn't yeah. break the bank, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we give reviews that way. And, yeah. like, he hangs out, gives it to his friends, hangs around, and then he has a chance to try one himself. He's like, these things are great, right? So super yeah. cool. And then he gets into other some stuff and whatnot. Um, but, but yeah, so, Todd, I will respond to your email this week. Um, I just thought it was one of those things where it's like, wow, like, you know, um, he, you know, and then he mentioned some of the closest brick and mortars to him. Uh, the actual closest brick and mortar to him is C Cigars International, right? Huh. So it's like, you know, <laughs> well, my, my, right? You know, and I get it, right? Because if Cigars International is there, there's probably not going to be a smaller store there. You know what I mean? You don't open up a, 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 tel a TV shop across the street from a Walmart. You know what I mean? Because right. you get buried in price and all that stuff. But yeah, so but but he talked about talked about like the value systems that that we use in the Stogie the Stogie reviews, and yeah. he appreciates that. Next episode, we are going to be doing um, sticks of the week, so stay tuned yeah. for that. Yeah, well, definitely, I got my smoking uh, repertoire uh, uh, list ready to go. So yeah, I think we're just going to burn through. Uh, you know, yeah. if we can get now, if the stars align and and and. Nelson, you and myself are together. We can just burn through like like five or six sticks each. That'd be super. Where's cool. the Where's the little pipsqueak today? Ah, uh, he's he's got he's got he's got business to attend to. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. You know, he's got business to attend to. But he texted me on Tuesday, Drew. No. You sometimes text me like an hour before the show. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm a pro. I'm uh, a pro. No, you're a pro, you? right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Drew, we yeah. got a Super Bowl coming up. Um, yeah. just to let you know, uh, I did some research, uh, here and the national chicken wing, uh, I'm sorry, the national chicken council 
uh, mm-hmm. has said that Super Bowl Sunday is expected to have uh, hit a record 1.4 billion chicken wings that are going to be consumed uh, mm-hmm. during the game. You can put me down for 29. Um, yeah. I, I just I think we that. can have a little fun with this right before we leave. And I pour I said, a scotch more I, whiskey. I can't believe you could eat 20. Well, I don't know. I mean, the wings over there in your uh, side of the country might be a little small. Uh, but yeah, twenty nine. That's that's uh, that's an, that's ambitious. <laughs> well, you got to remember, Super Bowl, Super Bowl is is it's a it's not a day. I mean, it I used know. to be a day. Oh, it's three days. Pre COVID, it used to be a week. That's one of the things I miss about like this. Is one of the things that like COVID takes away, right? COVID has yeah. the event, the lightning strike event, but there's no hype around events, right? We had a World yeah. Series, okay. You know, we we got yeah. you know NASCAR's version, and you know there and okay. Uh, I'm trying to go through the, the you know now we have a Super Bowl which was pre-COVID right last yeah. year, right? Uh, we have a Super Bowl, and it's like okay, you know it'll be and, and I don't know I just it, it, I I like the build up right, which yeah. is probably it's- why I like story geeks. Right? I like the story around the cigars. Right, yeah. So I like the build up, and normally, you know, you have what uh, Patriots Row. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not called Patriots Row this year. You, you, you have the the, the Super Bowl <laughs> row where you know you you get to go, and and you know the kids yeah. can go and throw a football and see if it's as long as Tom Brady's or yeah. whoever's in the Super Bowl and, and all that. And and you have like media covering it and whatnot. Yeah. You know, you like I literally found out uh, who was singing the Super Bowl. Halftime show like today and the only reason yeah. why is because like I went to the dentist and it was on the radio While the dentist was was doing that stuff there, too And it's like, you know, like normally you, you there's like a, a hype and a buzz around Events like that, right? Yeah. A Super Bowl, a World Series An election uh, an inauguration, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like everything's just like, yep, 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 three hours. Let's, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's get everybody safe. Let's get everybody safe. And that's been and that's been the theme. And yeah. you know, it, it kind of strips away from the experience. So I wanted to spend a quick couple of minutes and not strip away from the experience uh, without it being stripped away from us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. Most yeah. Uh, you know, for 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 me and my Super Bowl <laughs> champion, I'm, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I, I should not say that because I'm gonna jinx something. Uh, I digress. Let me go over this. So chips and dip is the number one is going to be the number one consumable uh, f- uh, food. This you know during any Super Bowl, they're saying chips and dips. Wings came in second at thirty six percent. Pizza followed by nachos, cheese and crackers, cookies, burgers, meatballs, tacos, and ice cream. Ooh. In, in that order. So the top, that's the top ten. Uh, chicken wings. I'm, I'll probably do twelve to, to fifteen. Um, I'll do twelve to fifteen of those during the entire game. Uh, our wings here in Texas are bigger than the ones probably where you're from. So, you know, well, maybe may, maybe it was not chicken. Maybe it's like squirrels <laughs> or something. <laughs> chicken, chicken wings. They're like little. Like you know what yeah. I mean? They're, they're little where we are. Well, everything's bigger in Texas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so twelve but, is your number? Is that the yeah? Tw- twelve to fifteen is my number because every time I order a ten piece, I'm 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 like I'm still hungry, and I order another ten piece, and then next thing I know, I got five of them to carry home with me. So, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work always bold well for me uh, because I end up having to take five home. Mm. Uh, and then uh, and then for drinks, they're saying soda is the number one product, beer is second. Iced tea is third, wine is fourth, and whiskey is fifth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with that because I don't. I don't really. I mean, I don't drink. Well, I don't really drink a lot of soda, uh, but beer for sure, uh, or wine, whiskey. I don't really drink a lot of whiskey during the Super Bowl games, uh, unless I'm going to have a cigar and I'll be outside in the cigar garden. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'll be out there this weekend because it's going to be very cold here. Oh, what fifty? Uh, uh, they're talking <laughs> like twenty, like twenty low twenties. <laughs> oh, so it's gonna That's be a day in the for... life over here. I know, I, I hear that, <laughs> but uh, over here, yeah, yeah, we we won't be outside. But uh, yeah, to uh, I was just talking to a couple of friends this morning, excuse me, who are in Tampa, and they were telling me that the uh, the NFL experience over there is, you know, it's it's very limited. Uh, 
you know, they, they, you can walk around the perimeters and and whatnot. But I mean, they're strictly enforcing the uh, six feet, you know, the six feet apart, all the masks for sure. But all the bars and all the scenery in there, it's it's I I I I, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I was telling I was telling Barbara earlier. I was telling my wife earlier. I was like, hey, uh, if I get us some tickets, uh, plane tickets, uh, you know, is that something you're down for? And she's like, yeah, that sounds like fun. I'm like, all right. So I, you know, I, I might be down there later on this evening <laughs> in uh, in Tampa, and then I'll, I'll go visit the J.C. Newman guys and stuff like that because their cigar factory is right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of people in town. Um, I mean, not a lot of people in town, but there's there's they'll, they'll allow a certain number of people to come in, but. Uh, yeah, more than likely she'll probably tell me, no, that's not a good idea. Let's stay home and then do our own Super Bowl thing here at home, mm-hmm. which will be nice. Yeah, yeah. With the little guy, I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, we're always laying low. Obviously, I mean, you know, Mama Bear works in a hospital, and we had a, we got a two and a half year old, so you know, you can only yeah. roll the dice so many times with going back and forth to the hospital, right? <laughs> uh, for, yeah. for for work and all that stuff, but you know, um, see, to me, Super Bowl is like a slow eating day, right? You know, yeah. I like to hear the stories. Um, yeah. You know, even though as a Patriots fan, we've heard the story of Tom Brady. You know what I mean? And oh. and you know, but I like to hear the story. Of you know when they start and where they go, and it's the same thing when I watch boxing events or like MMA, yeah. right? You know, yeah. um, you know, like I like to, I, I, I've, always, I was always one of those people. Like if there was like a big boxing event, uh, a pay per view, and and we watched it at someone's house, like you know everybody's dipping in the chips and dip, and the kitchen, yeah. and I'm in the living room watching the commentary like three hours before the fight because I want to know more. Like it, it's just a story, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, yeah. people don't care; they're just there because you know their friends are there and whatnot. And you know, which is probably why we were, that we're on Story Geeks because we like the commentary, right? It's like right. I, you know, I don't only like the cigar; I want to meet the person who rolled it, you know. And we have the opportunity right. to do that, but you know, it's to me, it's like a slow eating day. You know what I mean? It's like you know, so yeah, I'll put some twenty nine wings down. I wasn't gonna have chicken wings. Chicken wings were not on the menu. Uh, kind of grazed through the day, yeah. Until yeah, I did yeah. the research today, but now chicken wings are on the menu, which means I'm gonna yeah. drive my Bethany crazy because she's gonna be like, "I thought you wanted tacos." I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna get some chicken wings too." And she's like, "You're gonna have chicken wings and tacos?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have chicken wings and tacos." I don't think the ladies understand that we would we would do the pizza, chicken wings, tacos, ice cream, eh, and maybe a couple other sweets, and then go back to more savory foods like some ribs or. Uh, you know, yeah, another burger. <laughs> yeah, but like, like all the hype's gone, and it kind of strips him. It kind of strips away. Like you know, like you look at Tom Brady, right, in his story, and yeah. you know he goes there, and you know it, it, clearly it, it met, he merited being there, right? I mean, you know, yeah. I, I I think that when you're 11 yards and fourth down, and you know you, you don't kick, you don't freaking go for the field goal. You yeah. go for the, you know, I mean, 11 yards, like, this is it. It's do or die. It's win or go home. Take the freaking chance. They get possession at the freaking 20 yard line. Ain't all the, the freaking 11, where's my math? 11, 19. Oh, I'm yeah. going to bring 89 yards to go. Yards, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was having, I'm sorry. All right? It's the whiskey. All right? Or it's my <laughs> giddiness because I get to look at the television and see you. It's probably both. Right? But. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Right, but you know, and, and and it's like you know, like you know. Anyway, he's there, right? Yeah. And then I don't know, man. Like I'm, I talked to some people about this, and they're like, "Yeah, well, you know, I'd like to see him win." You got some people who have sour grapes, you know. Oh, he oh, should yeah. have had Patriots. Cam stinks. This, that, and the other thing. It's like, dude, man. Like, freaking, it doesn't matter. Like, you, you're probably still gonna watch it, right? Like, I'm gonna watch it. You know. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be doing the uh, halftime show for sure. Whether I'm here or over there, because I, I I love the weekend. That dude's pretty cool. He's a pretty talented guy. So I'll be doing a, you know, trying to emulate some of the uh, dance moves he does. Nice. Uh, yeah. After <laughs> after a, after about a keg of beer, of course. Yeah. You know. You know. <laughs> Embarrass my wife. You know. I but just you know, I, even even where was I when I oh the freaking um New Year's Eve and yeah. you know I watched the the uh, 
I put on the ball drop, right? The ball drop yeah. thing. And I put it on right after the little guy goes to bed, 9 o'clock. And I watch like 10 minutes of it. And I get the mask yeah. on and they're dancing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's a COVID era. I get it. But like, yeah. you're outside in Rockefeller Center, man. You, it's 20 degrees. You don't need a mask. Like freaking, right. you, know, you know what I mean? I'm not anti-mask. I'm just saying. Just, you know, yeah. but it's it's the times we're in. It's crazy. You know, it's just it's just crazy. I watched like ten minutes of that and then tuned in like four four minutes before New Year's. Uh, yeah. The ball dropped and I watched uh, the Twilight Zone marathon. If you needed to know that, what you got? Oh, your Tampa Bay mask on, oh, man. You're yeah. all coordinated with that yeah, stuff. I'm not. I'm all nice. Yeah. No, I'm I'm ready. I mean, like, I'll tell you, I've, I've been getting so many, you know, so many haters on on, on this. Uh, 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 on this on this Super Bowl, they're like, "Oh man, that guy! You guys only picked him up because you guys knew he was on taking the Super Bowl." I'm like, "Really?" Because at the beginning of the year, everybody thought, "Oh, tsh, what a what a what a travesty!" But no, he well, just, he just he just needs some time to warm up. And one uh, one of the other thing I wanted to ask you, you know what's incredible? Uh, like you were saying about listening to the backstories, that one I've been hearing about with Tom Brady going to the 49er game when he was like like what seven or something like that mm -hmm. eight. And he was watching Joe Montana, and he happened to be there at at, mm -hmm. the, at at the stadium. And you know, he he he's I don't know, he's he he's saying something like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to do that." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then for him to yeah. do it, like <laughs> for him to do yep. it ten times, been at the Super Bowl ten times, uh, has won six. You know. Yep. Uh, that's that's amazing. I mean, that's just pretty. I mean, that's like, wow. I mean, did that lock in his head at that point? It, you know. That day, you know, and then, it's and then he just went on. It's kind of funny. I could spend another half hour on this because there are some things that I've done within my life where I was like, you know, I want to do that, right? Like yeah. I remember when I first started listening to AM radio. Like I've always wanted to be like a radio host. You know what I mean? And, That's funny. And and, yeah, and, and then I was like, yeah. I want to do that, and I did that, right? Uh, yeah. And and and, and then uh, you know uh, another aspect. You know, uh, I always wanted to own a cigar shop, right? And I did yeah. that. You know what I mean? And then there's yeah. a boatload more that that are not particular to this show, but like that's why I love like like stories like that because it does educate the little person because you're an impressionable at that point, right? And yeah. and let them know that like you could really you can do it. Do yeah. it. Like, you could do it. Now, there are some things that I probably cannot do. For example, I, when I saw Michael Phelps swimming, when he was winning all those golds, I had no interest in jumping in the pool. You know what I mean? But I'm sure there are some people who were in swim class or doing that and have taken, and, and, and you become inspirational. And that's why it's ultra important for them to behave on and off the field. Yeah. Right. That's another episode, probably for another podcast. Right. But oh, yeah. but it, it, it's so important because it's impressionable. Right. And and yeah. you realize the impression that you bring uh, on the table for uh, young, inspiring athletes, especially yeah. if they rally uh, around race or gender. Doesn't matter yeah. the sport. Like like they're impressionable people, and. Oh, yeah. You know, the, you you should take that responsibility. I think Yoda said it. You know, with great no Obi Wan said it right. With great power yeah. becomes great responsibility, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> or yeah. if I'm butchering the shows, I apologize. I I am a fan of Star Wars, but it's all a blur, and it and yeah. that's become a hot mess to become unraveled anyway. <laughs> have you have you uh, uh you know with with my grandson Mateo? You know, I I bought him his little golf bag you know it's plastic it has the plastic putters and whatnot oh, yeah. in the ball and i bought him that and i brought up my set and he looks over at me he smiles i'm like i said okay well, all you got to do is do what i do basically follow me around the lawn mm -hmm. we're gonna hit some balls i'm gonna hit him with this you hit him with those and and it's just stuff like that that you're you know that you're hoping to leave an impress you know like you said the impression of of doing that and then watching you know um uh, watching golf with him and just kind of sitting there, and, and of course, you know, he, he's done after about what ten seconds. Well, anything, anything <laughs> keeps real that last twenty two yeah, minutes. Yeah, but you know what I mean. But it's cool though. I mean, <laughs> but to go outside with him and 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 him have these toys and uh, uh, or have these uh, have that, you know, like a, like you know, and that's what I tell him. So you're gonna be a, you're gonna be a great golfer. You're gonna be better than me. 
Yeah. Which at this after last week's golf game, I went. I, I actually played in. Uh, anybody would be better than me. I, there, there's something to be said when you take some time away from golf. I mean, I'm. Whew, that was rough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, we golf extremely seasonal here in the Northeast, and yeah. uh, you know, I, I, where we have eight inches of snow, we're not golfing anytime soon. Uh, yeah. there too, and it's funny because when I go back, right, because we take a really big layover, like it won't be till like April at best for us, right? Oh wow! And yeah. and I take it, and the first time I go out, it's like I don't know if I'm excitedly focused. But the first time I go out, I'm like, shit, I don't really lose that much. You know what I mean? And then when you yeah. stop playing in consistent rhythm, you <laughs> ball starts going all different directions. <laughs> and then you come unraveled. Not during that day, that first day. But, you know, what are you going to do? It happens. I went out. I went out with my boss and a couple guys. And I decided we decided to go out and play this real tough course that's all five and fours. And it has a couple of threes and twos or a couple of threes. Three pars, 18. And uh, it was like, what, 35 to 40 a mile, mile hour wind yeah, nice. on top of that. So, yeah, yeah. we were just, <laughs> I was like, I was, I, that day, finally around the seventh hole, uh, seventh uh, hole, I, I started to, you know, you know, started to roll the ball <laughs> to the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> well, drive driving low and letting it roll and letting it just do its thing. Do its thing. And well, you know, uh, not to give golf lessons here on Story Geeks, but hands in front of the ball, then yeah. you keep it low and uh, drive away and and keep it low. And uh, we 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 played in those conditions. Like, yeah, I'm sure you're not a good driver. Yeah, but you know, went 175 yeah. straight and yours is freaking 210 and you're in the bushes. So knock yourself out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a result-based business. That's all I gotta say, right? Exactly. That's a, exactly. It's a result-based business for sure. So, um, yeah. anyway, um, now that we've probably uh, come off the any derail, any other topics you want to talk about in the next minute or so, Drew? Before we well, wrap yeah, up, yeah. I, I, I just it. wanted to. I just wanted to let you know, like on, back on the virtual deal, um, on on the virtual businesses or virtual happenings. Uh, um, like my wife and I, we started doing like some of the dance, Texas dance stuff. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can do that virtually with uh, with some uh, dance uh, uh, lessons and whatnot. And then the other thing, the uh, <laughs> so I I've got a virtual uh, appointment next uh, Wednesday morning to learn some tricks from uh, from a pro magician. So I'm going to go on virtually, and then he's going to teach me how to do some card tricks. You know? Oh, dude, you're going to uh, do that on Story Geeks? You know, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I'm gonna like make. I'm gonna make this yeah. guy disappear. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch and, this and the scotch and the scotch yeah. go along with it. But I mean, there was. Uh, we found that. We, my wife and I, found that. We found that. Uh, meet your mates for an online murder mystery. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The other thing we found was explore a very, very cool ex, uh, virtual exposition or ex, uh, exhibition. Yep. Shit, I drank too much already. Uh, and then, uh, you know, watching a, a performance at the New York, uh, from the New York Metropolitan Opera. And these are all live uh, to see these. Uh, the other one we found was at New York Metropolitan uh, Museum of Art, the Met, uh, see augmented reality versions of classic artworks. And, and so, I mean, there's so many things. Uh, there's even attending a, a, like a film festival from your living room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just just you know, and you're actually there. Uh, they, they even have a space uh, station one where you can uh, not only can you star stargaze, but you can actually there's cameras up there to to kind of follow around with the uh, space station and things of that nature. Look at that. So I'm yeah, pretty it. cool. I mean, these are all virtual things that you can actually uh, pay. It's not that expensive. It's it's very inexpensive. You can actually host a party at your home if you like. Uh, for three or four people, I would say, yeah, uh, for all intents and purposes. But yeah, uh, those are just some of the neat virtual things uh, that you can do, um, you know, in your home or you know to to break up because a lot everybody's tired of Netflix already. And I mean, I've got Netflix. I've I've got five subscription channels that I've just now started to you know uh, put them on pause because I'm uh, I'm you know I'm tired of that. I want to do something that's mm -hmm. that require me to travel, but I don't have to because they have a virtual business to mm. to uh, end that need for us. So that's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. 
We should do to- we should do a Story Geeks conference during uh, COVID times. Um, mm-hmm. Story Geeks can chime in and do that. Would you be in? Would you be down with that? I know Nelson would. He'd be like all over that. Oh yeah, 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 you know? definitely. That'd be cool. Come smoke yep. with Joe and Drew, and uh, <laughs> and hang out. That'd be cool. We should we should do that. Smoking drinks. We should we should do that. We should do we should yeah. probably do that in mid February and see if we can get that done. Story Geeks, if you want to attend that, email me at Joe H at StogiGeeks uh, and I'll put you on the list for that. We should make that happen. That'd be super cool. Figure out a yeah. platform, do that there, and just freaking chill with the, with the audience, and you know, just just be like, "Yo, this is what's up," and how you doing? And thanks for yeah, listening to Story that. Geeks. And, yeah, let's uh, do that. You know, we'll, Nelson, uh, Nelson will have on. some tidbits along the way. I'm sure he'll put together a curriculum. He loves that stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's he's very uh, very very good at that. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. So Sounds it was, good. It's good. To, it's good to be back. Uh, you know. Uh, it, you know, I just my, my work just took me away from uh, you know programming as we you know here on Fridays, and now that my schedule's back uh, to being what I'm used to uh, for the rest of the year, looks like uh, yeah, well, we'll be here uh, doing some shows. We'll pl- we'll finally have my anniversary date, birthday, and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. Looking forward to it, true. It's a pleasure. Me too. Thank you for uh, coming on Story Geeks and, and sharing that story. Ge- story Geeks. It's been a privilege and an honor to sit here. I want to say thank you to Johnny and Gustavo uh, for for producing the show. Remember, we keep yes. the conversation going all week long. Visit StogieGeeks.com. You can follow us over on Facebook. Email me at joh at StogieGeeks.com. You can email Drew all your complaints at Drew at StogieGeeks.com. If you want to give Nelson some love, Nelson at stogiegeeks.com and uh, tell him how we missed him and we missed uh, his candor as well. Behind every cigar, yeah. I want to remind you, it's a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local, support your local businesses, wear a mask, be safe, enjoy your chicken wings. We'll see you next time, Stogie Geeks. Peace. PNL. PNL.